Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. You know what's even better? Tell your friends about it. Tell them about the best wine show anywhere. That's what I'm telling you to do. Anyway, it's good to be back. So if you've been wondering what's been going on, this episode should hopefully explain that. Now, if you follow me on the gram or Facebook, then you should kind of have an idea of what's going on. So a few months ago, I decided that I was going to start work on yet another YouTube channel. Yeah, I know. Uh, I barely did anything with that behind the green screen channel. So I started a third one. That's kind of complicated. This third channel is called Psalm School Advanced and is a monster of a project. I'm creating an expert level series of educational videos about everything someone taking the Court of Master Sommelier's advanced sommelier exam needs to know. Uh, so far, I've only completed two countries, Australia and South Africa. I, I still have a few things to do with South Africa, like you know, polishing up the scripts, but effectively, it's done. My plan was to complete eight to nine sets of videos in a couple months over the summer and then get back to doing WWTV and the BTGS videos. Uh, that obviously didn't happen. So now I need to get set up on WWTV for the next few months, like almost five months. I, I really have that many samples uh, to review, plus all my end of the year specials and anything else that just kind of comes along between now and the end of the year. Uh, behind the green screen may have to wait longer before I create content for that. I really just don't have time to do three channels worth of content. Now, I'm going to stop putting episode numbers for WWTV videos in the actual video. Uh, I'll continue to put the number in the titles. The reason is this will allow me more flexibility. I don't have to get locked in with a Monday, Friday schedule, and I can freely insert videos uh, as needed between other videos that were completed. Uh, you know, it's been an issue a few times over the past year. It's a hassle to re-edit and then upload a ton of videos just because I need to change an episode number. It's a rarity to actually put episode numbers in most videos on YouTube anyway. So I'm going to, uh, so th the thing is with this, I'm going to go off script for a second. The whole episode number thing really does throw a, a wrench into the works. If I have to like do something on the fly, get, get a video put in, I agree to do some type of review or I decide to do an interview with somebody, then I got to shift all these video numbers, all these episode numbers. If, if I, do that. And then all I got to do really without those numbers in the hardwired or, or burned into the video is that I just have to change the episode number in the title of the actual video post. And I can change the, uh, the date that those videos will be done. So that's why I'm going to change all that because I've been watching a lot of people's videos and no, almost none of them put actual episode numbers in the video itself. Their title may have it, but not the video. All right, so I'm also going to stop doing my merchandise pitch. I'll have a link to the store in the description, and maybe I'll have some kind of lower third. I don't know. You know, in writing my next 30 plus scripts, yeah, yeah, 30 ish plus scripts, uh, I had plenty of that doing a pitch just didn't seem like it would flow right. And, you know, I, I wear I wear all this stuff, so it's like if you want if you want to buy my stuff, go ahead and buy it. But no more like outright just pitches. So I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, Psalm School Advanced is literally taking all the wine production areas of the world and creating a high level videos for them. So that's the new project. I'm also using Google Earth Pro extensively to map out all the appellations. This is what uh, is taking forever, drawing all those appellations. Now, I've gotten lucky on a couple instances where I can download the information in a format that Google Earth Pro can use so I don't have to literally draw all the boundaries. What I've done so far is more accurate than most all of the maps you see out there right now. I'm being dead serious. Of course, this will also benefit me 
and my reviews since I use Google Earth Pro for them too. So it's a kind of a double thing. I'm kind of like doing two things at the same time to benefit me. Now, I've also created a set of standards for my mapping in Google Earth Pro. So I'll have to adapt that to the other areas I've already done, you know, places like Portugal and some parts of uh, South America and things like that. Uh, it's actually pretty epic what I can do with that software, software and I've really gotten uh, good at it or used to, I've gotten good at it, gotten used, with, used to it. I've now created a set of standards for my mapping in Google Earth Pro 2. So I'll have to adapt that to the other areas I've already done. This is really a pretty epic project uh, and what I can do with this software is pretty epic. And over these last several months, I feel I've gotten much better. I've gotten pretty good at using it. So what I mean by these set of standards, there's the outlines are going to denote, the color of the outline is going to denote what level that you're going into as far as larger to smaller. The colors, the shading of these areas is kind of a random thing or whatever, but the outline, say if it's magenta or green or yellow, is an indicator of how big or small or how high or low in the levels of Appalachians you're doing. So I have to redo that with all the ones I've already done. Anyway, other than this project, and honestly, I've just been doing my normal day-to-day -day routine. Do the day job, go to tasting and theory group as much as I can, and not really go anywhere else. Um, COVID kind of does that to you. Plus, you know, I just don't have any desire to like really go hang out in places. Now, over the next several months, I'll continue working on these projects. I also expect to be in a sommelier competition at Tech Summit in November. Now, I submitted my application and... I was expecting to know something a couple weeks after writing the script initially. Uh, I might even know before I start recording. No, I don't know because they haven't sent out an email yet. Um, but this will be the third time I've been in it if I get accepted and hopefully third time's a charm. So Texas is, is going to happen in mid-November. Yeah, I know. Like, why are you having a wine industry thing in OND of October, November, December? In, in you know this the, the last quarter of the year. I don't know. I do have the ability to take just enough time off to go up there for the competition. And they haven't notified us. This, you know, September 3rd, technically, but September 2nd, they haven't notified us of anything like volunteers or competitors if we've been accepted and all that kind of stuff. And the event is in two and a half months. So my feeling is they're kind of waiting for the last moment, considering everything that's going on with COVID as of right now with Delta variant and all that other stuff. That I think they're holding off to make the actual commitment before people start booking plane trips and booking hotel rooms and making commitments to be in Dallas only to have them cancel it. Stay at the Four Seasons isn't a big deal because when you book there, you aren't paying anything ahead of time, and I don't think I've ever put down a deposit. So you could cancel with no penalty. It's those plane flights at the beginning of COVID. There was a whole like, well, what if I cancel my plane flight because I can't go somewhere and the airlines finally relented? I don't know what the policies are right now because there's a lot more travel going on. So I have a feeling that they're kind of waiting to, to get a better idea if this current variant we have going on is... Uh, kind of goes and recedes and, and doesn't, you know, uh, goes in retreat is what I want to say. It has in a few places, um, but it's so early, you don't, we don't know yet if it's going to continue to go down or it's just like a little dip. Anyway, back to the script. Anyway, this time I'm entering uh, this competition to flat out win it. Winning means $2,500. Minus my expenses for that trip, I'll have almost enough to pay for the advanced exam that includes my travel expenses. Second place is 1,500 and third is 500. Now, I will absolutely take second or third place, uh, but it's really first place that I want as far as financing my next exam. If you wanna help me out, there's a PayPal link somewhere in there. You can send me some ducats, um, but other than that, yeah. So, do I expect to win it? I think I can be prepared enough in the next couple months because of all the stuff I've been doing with Psalm School Advanced and some of these other educational stuff I've been doing for WWTV that doesn't quite fit Psalm School Advanced. I have a ton of flashcards. I've done a lot of prep work already for the advanced exam last time. So I think I can be in a good spot 
And I absolutely know I'll do way better than I've done the first two times I took it. The first time it was an epic failure. The second time was less of an epic failure. This time, I think I can do better. I'm not claiming I'm going to win it, but I think I will do way, way better. And I think I would have as much a shot as anybody else. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and tell your friends. Until next time, we'll see you in the next show.